What's up everybody? My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I help clients with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, and other gut-related conditions so they can eliminate bloating, gas, other unwanted GI symptoms. Last week I discussed some new information from Dr. Mark Pimentel's recent research and specifically talked about the impact of stomach acid boosting medications while doing SIBO treatment. And this week I'm going to share two of his other recent findings pertaining to SIBO. First is the two actual bacteria that are now known to be causing SIBO. And the second is something called cytolethal descending toxin, abbreviated as CDTB, what it is and its impact on SIBO. In SIBO, it's obvious that there's an overgrowth of bacteria. It was previously thought that just any bacteria would do in this case. Doesn't matter if it's good, neutral, bad. If there's too many of them, it's SIBO, right? Well, Dr. Pimentel is now saying that this is no longer the case. And there are actually two causative bacteria of SIBO. One you've probably heard of is E. coli, and the other one you may not have heard of, but it is Klebsiella. Having a certain portion of both E. coli and Klebsiella, it's actually actually normal for a human microbiome. However, if more and more of one or both of these is present, it can cause a worsening dynamic and lead to SIBO. Basically, eventually the microbiome kind of hits a tipping point where it can only stand a certain amount. And then if there's too much of one or both of those, SIBO and symptoms can result because the dysbiosis and imbalance in the gut is now too great. So both E. coli and Klebsiella, they're known as hydrogen producing bacteria. We do know that the hydrogen gas all alone by itself is not actually causing these symptoms, but it is kind of fueling the methane and hydrogen sulfide, which is causing those nasty SIBO symptoms. So knowing these two bacteria that are the causative ones per his research is exciting information to have and can definitely guide the way we look at treating and figure out what the best things to do for treating SIBO are in the future. And now the second order of business is discussing that cytolethal distending toxin. Hopefully you've never had food poisoning, but if you've been one of the unlucky people that has, such as myself, this CDTB toxin is actually found in all four of the types of bacteria that cause food poisoning. And the four bacteria that we're talking about here are Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter dejuni, don't know if I said that right, doesn't matter, Lastly is E. coli. If you notice, E. coli does pop up in both of these categories here. You may be thinking, all right, the effects of this food poisoning, I have this for two to three days at max and then it's done. So if that's the case and this nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, it's over, what's the big deal with food poisoning? The issue is that this CDTB has a long-standing negative effect on the nerves and smooth muscle on the lining of the small intestines. It happens in a series of steps. First, the body's exposed to the toxin, CDTB toxin, often through food poisoning. Our body, like it should do, reacts by producing a bunch of these antibodies to protect ourselves against the toxin and kind of prevent against a major issue with that same toxin in the future. Unfortunately, some of these antibodies that are targeted toward this CDTB toxin also can mistake it for a protein called vinculin. And this vinculin is a protein that is involved in the connection and communication of the nerves of the small intestines in order to propel food properly through the intestines. It's incredibly important in the role of the migrating motor complex working properly. When these antibodies, these anti-CDTB antibodies, when they mistakenly target vinculin. This prevents proper nerve impulses in the intestines and then food cannot travel properly through the small intestines. Thus the migrating motor complex MMC is impaired now. Also, it actually gets worse. What are known as anti-vinculin antibodies can also develop. So essentially now we have antibodies that are attacking our own proteins in our own lining of our small intestines. So this attacking of our own tissue, this is actually an autoimmune condition now. This autoimmune condition is what is responsible for potentially leading to down the road long-term motility issues in the gut. This can lead to SIBO and hopefully this makes sense. That is all for today. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and join me next week, Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time for my next video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great week.